Well, hey, my friends, I'm so glad that you are with me on the podcast today. You know, sometimes in seasons of life, people start slowing down, but the couple that I have with me today are actually speeding up in this season of their life. They're doing incredible things for the Lord and with their art. Teresa and Terry Arsenault are here with me, uh, and I'm so glad that you guys are here today. So welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. So I wanted to let you guys kind of tell a little bit of your of your backstory, but really focus in on on where you are today, because it's a beautiful story. And I think going to be so inspiring for so many folks that are maybe coming back to their art or maybe envisioning what this season of life could could look like for them. So whichever one of you is ready to talk, uh, maybe a, a little bit about your backstory and and uh, and how you came to be where you are today. Um, for me, um, I've always been interested in art. I remember drawing in grade when I was both six, drawing cars for the future. Yeah. And then well, I never turned out that way. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> and then I got into school and I love art right through class, right through a great elementary school. Then I took four years of art in high school. I didn't go any further than that. I just loved it. Yeah. And uh, I did all kinds of mediums. That was, it was great. And then uh, life took over after that. And I never touched my art again until... I met this lovely lady <laughs> in 1985. We're originally, we were teenage, uh, we dated for a month, we were teenagers, teenagers, and we split up, and 12 years later, we got back together, and wow. we got two years after that. And You reeled him and, in, huh, Teresa? You reeled him in, or, or, or the other way around. <laughs> <laughs> you could say that, yeah. <laughs> and so when I met Teresa, she was a Christian, I wasn't, and then um, we went to a pastor to get married, and he said, well, you're not compatible. I said, Terry, you need to you need to accept the Lord. So he said, Teresa, take him out in the parking lot. And that's what happened. <laughs> and four months later, we got married. <laughs> and after that, the Lord started putting on my heart to draw again. Wow. And so I did one drawing and then they didn't touch. It was on and off for a lot of years. And then back about 2008, we had this artist come to our church here on Summerside PEI. And uh, she encouraged us to get back into art. She was actually painting during a service. Wow. And we're drawn to that. And so she encouraged me to get back to art. So I did my first sketch and I'm looking at it going, oh my sakes. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any hope for me, right? Thinking. <laughs> but anyways, uh, I, I stayed with it. And my I love drawing hands. Yeah. I can draw anything but the face. I uh, always struggled with that. Wow. And so I was on and off. And so I would draw during a church sermon because I have a problem staying focused. Uh -huh. And so when I draw... I can actually hear what's going on. And my mind is concentrating what I'm drawing. Wow. I did that for years in church. And so I get motivated a lot in church, how to, what the Lord has shown me to draw. And I did it. But the last two or three years, God's been really speaking to my heart to not focus on the other mediums, but just drawing. But God yeah. Like. Now, what and were you so, doing professionally um, all these years, Terry? Um, well, for up to about 19, 2003, I worked at a petrochemical plant in Ontario. We made plastic pellets. Yeah. And then we moved here, and uh, that was another <laughs> that's another story. It was really hard to find work here. Yeah. So I did every job possible. Yeah. So right now I started my own computer training service, training and troubleshooting. So I do a lot of seniors. Yeah. They come into homes and I help them with any technology issue at all. So I'm a technical trainer. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. I love that. So, I love that. Now, Teresa, how about you? Are you always an artist, or when did that start blossoming in your life? I am mainly, the, I, I started doing art in my 50s, believe it or not, but I'm mainly a writer, uh -huh. and my um, passion is for fantasy, inspirational fantasy. Yeah. I don't know if that's an actual genre, but if you go back to the original writers of fantasy, like George MacDonald, C.S. Lewis, yeah. J.R.R. Tolkien, Tolkien yeah. it was all about um, expressing our amazing God through fiction. I mean, God is supernatural. He's exciting. He's amazing. And I don't know any other written medium that can express that as well as fantasy How fiction wonderful. does. I started, um, I knew I wanted to be a writer when I was nine years old. Um, but I think it was before then because I can remember being a toddler in my stroller and my mom parking me in front of a tree that had a knot hole. And I'm imagining all this whole 
this owl that lives in there and wow. his name is Mr. Who and, and all this. <laughs> and so I wrote some of my first stories when I was about nine and they were later on Scooby-Doo came out and they had my story basically. <laughs> <laughs> that I wrote. Yeah, so um had a lot of struggles and derailments. And uh I about 2010, we had had so many traumatic events happen in our lives and in mm. our family. I ended up in the mental ward for a couple of weeks with wow. severe ang- severe anxiety yeah. disorder. Yeah. And I could not write an email. Mm. like two sentences. Wow. I don't even know how for years. I didn't think I'd ever be able to write again. But it was at that time that I started getting involved in art. Art journaling, especially, brought a lot of healing to me. Mm. And that's one thing that I'd like to have taught one course. But I would like to do that in the future, because It brought me so much healing. In an afternoon, I received more healing through putting on worship music and doing collage and messing around with paint in four hours than I received in an hour in a year of therapy. Wow. Why do you why do you think that was in in your specific case? I think because I am very visual. Uh So even when I write, like I had to convince Terry and our son not to interrupt me when I'm writing because (laughs) I go into like they call I've heard it called the writer's trance yeah it's like a dreamlike state Mm. and if someone if you were to call me on the phone when I'm in the middle of writing a scene you would think you just woke me up wow because I get really deep into it I because I want my reader to experience what is it what is my character feeling what is my character smelling what is my character tasting hearing you know like the whole experience what does the wind feel like on his face and 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 everything and so i have to dig really down deep so i'm in the scene and then hopefully i take my reader with me how beautiful how beautiful (laughs) yeah you know i'm i'm so interested because i'm I'm always interested in couples that are that are creative um because i don't know at least for me and my wife, you know, our create our creative expression is very different. Like Tanya, for example, is a fiber artist. So she loves embroidery. She loves, you know, sewing and all this kind of stuff. And I'm, you know, obviously do baskets and painting and writing and that sort of thing, both kind of in our own worlds. I'm interested for you guys, how your creativity tends to come in and out of each other and has it always been the same way or has has that grown together as as you guys have have grown over the years in marriage that is that is a totally amazing story we're actually developing a a work together that i have a little sample here yeah one of the things oh i Um, love it i love it this is that wood sculpture that terry made and i painted it and coated it with encaustic Wow. And now so all of our podcast <laughs> listeners, you have to go over to YouTube to see this, but it is, that is so gorgeous. That is so gorgeous. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, um, we're, we're creating a body of work that incorporates his, uh, skills at wood sculpture and my skills at encaustic painting. Wow. And so, uh, he's got like this whole water lily this huge water lily and it's all sculpted together with little pieces of wood and we're calling this body of work beauty from ash Mm. and there's three there's three parts to that the first part is simple it's ash wood terry fell in love with the with the wood grain with the grain of ash wood and that's why when i do the painting most of the the things that are painted i use a a watercolor pigment that shows the grain because we Uh still want the grain of the wood. I love that. So that's one aspect of Beauty for Mash. The other aspect is the trees uh, that we've been using to make these sculptures were trees that were felled during Hurricane Dorian in 2019. Wow. So it's a tragedy, the ash. Yeah, yeah. And, And the third thing that's very personal is that our marriage was in shambles. Mm. And in 1994, the Lord 
got a hold of our of us in our marriage and <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to point fingers. <laughs> and the Lord transformed our marriage. Wow. He absolutely saved our marriage. And then we've grown as we've learned to grow closer to God. We've learned to love each other better. That's so and good. now uh, for us to actually bring our skills together and create something of beauty, it's another big aspect of beauty for MASH. So we're you excited. Know, that's, to that's such a vulnerable place, I think, to be in the creative space with each other. And Terry, I'm interested in your story because you're you're pointing the finger at, at, at yourself. <laughs> I know for from my own story that when I began to walk in a different measure of healing and wholeness in my life and um, be able to own some of my own issues and that sort of thing, you know, in marriage and all of that, that not only freed me up, but it freed my family up to be able to experience a different depth of the Holy Spirit, depth of relationship with me. Talk about that for yourself, because I know that that you know, and I have no idea what the backstory is there, but I just, I know that when we as men deal with our own stuff, it, it builds a platform and opens a door for, for our family to step into that as well. Yeah. Um, 94 is when the Lord got a hold of me. I was actually a Christian about 1987 mm. when we got married, but I was kind of a sitting on the wall type Christian. I wasn't really getting into it. And I backed it so many times. But about 1984, we actually separated in our own home for about a month. Mm. 94, you said 84. Oh, yeah. 94. <laughs> Sorry. That's why I got her next year. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> and so um, she actually said to me, you got to get your life turned around. Yeah. Otherwise, you have to move out. And the situation where I was going to move into wasn't going to be a very good situation. It was a former apartment of a pedophile. Mm. So I was not a nasty place. Yeah. Anyways. Um, so we went to church the next day and I wanted to get prayer. And so I'm standing in the, in the aisle, I'm standing in, actually, I wanted to get prayer before the service started and it didn't happen. And so I said, okay. And so I waited for the pastor to do altar calls and he was calling up women for all these issues. And I'm crying out, Lord, what about me? Yeah. <laughs> I need help with, with my issues. And finally, after that, I just put my hands up and it just started sh shaking a little bit. And then all of a sudden, these two hands come down beside me like this, down my neck, and they felt so good. And I just leaned right back into them on a 45 degree angle. And it felt so soothing and so good. And I imagine someone tall and blonde behind me. Yeah. And I said, and he said to me, who do you believe is your savior? And I said, Jesus Christ. Immediately I went, Poop. pastor was praying on me and I got healing, like incredible healing that time. Wow. Over three days, I got more. We went through a deliverance. We actually deliverance was a new thing for us. Wow. We treatment walked me through it. We couldn't get to this final breakthrough. And then our church was very much involved with the child of blessing at that time. It yeah. just started. And our pastors were good friends. And so we told them what was going on. They said, Well, come on, we're going to Toronto. It's a three-hour drive. So we did. So we get in there, and after it's all over, I stand there to get prayer. And John Arnott comes up and he prays on me. Nothing happened. I thought, well, this sucks. <laughs> so I was gonna leave. And then I'm looking around and seeing all these bodies all over the place. Yeah. And it looked like a war zone. Yeah. Because people getting healed and ministered and all that. I'm feeling ripped off. So I felt the Lord said, go back up one more time. So I went back up to the front. My pastor came. He prayed over me and went down for 45 wow. minutes on the floor. Wow. And I said, Lord, why am I here? He goes, <sighs> sorry. It's, yeah. You need to seek forgiveness. And I said, mm. okay, Lord, how? He said, three ways. You need to seek forgiveness from me. You need to seek forgiveness from those you hurt. And you need to seek forgiveness for hurting others. Wow. Okay, so I spent 45 minutes. I said, Lord, where do I start? He goes, from the beginning. Wow. For 45 minutes, that's what I did. And through this whole time, Teresa was praying over me. On wow. the floor and all these other people. And I finally woke up and the Lord said, no, you need to ask her to forgive you. Mm. And I did. And that broke the last stronghold. Wow. Wow. And it was free. And then after that, and my addictions was pornography, lying, anger. Um, uh, this, that was the main ones right there. And yeah. The Lord just broke off those desires. Like Come on. Just, just, just beg, like we're at the church and just cut them right off. I had no more. We actually talked that night at the church for the first time, a long time without 
I always do the talking. Usually it's her. <laughs> <laughs> First real conversation in about 10 years. Yeah. Wow. We were yeah. married about eight years. Yeah, about 10 years that time. Yeah. So after that time, there was a lot of, I went through some prayer healing ministry, the seven steps of freedom from Neil Anderson. Yeah. And I got a lot of healing. It took a couple of years. And then I slowly earned the trust back of my teenage sons and my wife. You just don't get it back. Like yeah, that. Sure. You don't earn that back. Mm-hmm. And I did. And I earned it back. And it, it brings us to where we are now. Yeah. And wow. we got involved in the church. And I became very involved with our church. I would go sound. I ran the sound system for a big church. We started with 80. It was up to 910 years. And the Lord just called me into that. They asked me to do it. And I, I had no idea how to do it. <laughs> and here you go. So by the time I left, I had a team of 27 techs. Incredible. And I told you here, I went to uh, PEI. Isn't it amazing, though, I think, you know, how one encounter with Jesus can change everything. All the years of struggle, all the years of addiction, all the years of whatever, one encounter with him can can reset like that. And then, and at the same time, that encounter is a moment, but then there's there's all these other moments that come after that, right? It's the working out of, of what he's just done in your heart, the, the realigning, if you will, of your heart with the, with this new truth and new reality. And I just love that because I, you know, and y'all know this about me because you've been in the mentoring program and all that, but I mean, that foundation of healing and wholeness and identity is foundational for everything. And I, I think, you know, I, I know you guys think about this is, as you think back on your journey, there's no way, there's no way that you'd be walking in what you're walking in now. Had y'all not walked through the healing that it took to to walk through that situation. I mean, uh, Teresa, talk about that from your perspective, because I mean, I'm sure it, 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 at one side, I'm thinking of Tanya and our whole story and all that sort of thing. At one side, you're like, I'm so excited. Finally, and the other side, you want to slap him in the head and like, what took <laughs> you so long? And, you know, I've been waiting on this for so long, you know? So. I'll just make one comment. I learned what the look is from her over those first few years. <laughs> Get right. that okay. Exactly. Back it up. Back it up. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Like I, I, I was very lonely in our marriage for a very, very, very long time. And um, so, anyways, what brought the thing? I didn't know what he was doing. Yeah. You know, I didn't know. I was completely clueless. God gave me a dream, mm. and this was before. Um, it became popular in Christian circles that yeah. God actually speaks through dreams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he gave me this dream and I went to my friend and we both fasted and prayed for the interpretation of this dream. I still didn't know entirely what it meant, but I s- sat down with Terry and I said, this one part of the dream, it's you. Yeah. And his jaw just dropped to the yeah. table. Yeah. And he went, upstairs to our bedroom and he got on his face weeping wow. before god the conviction of the holy spirit just wow. came on and that's what started it Come you know on. and um i mean he's talking about the like an angel standing behind him and he was leaning back i'm looking at him i'm beside him and i'm thinking how are you not falling over because <laughs> he, he was like literally back like this Whoa. like falling over and so you know, I'm witness that somebody was holding him up there. Yeah. So, yeah. And like he said, it took time to build that trust. Yeah. You know, because it it, it had eroded. And I had a lot of um, trauma from that. And just because when you have the addiction, the lies. Yeah. Go the that whole lying thing goes with it because you've got to cover up everything yeah, sure, right? sure. and the lack of communication well if i talk about anything too deep or too personal i might slip up right yeah so there was no real conversation like i mm-hmm. would start to talk to him and he would immediately start to nod off i would stop mid-sentence and he'd go like oh okay now i can go back and do what i was doing yeah and he wouldn't even notice i stopped mid-sentence so like yeah. it, it was it was not a good <laughs> It's yeah. not a good marriage. Yeah. And so now, like, I respect Terry more than any other man I know. Like, he is a man, a man of God. He's so full of integrity, honesty. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. 
you know, to his own detriment at times. But yeah, um, <laughs> yeah this is this is not the same man. Yeah, praise you know? God. He's just completely transformed and like, you know, now I feel like, well, I got to catch up to you. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think it just goes to show that when all of us, you know, husband, wife, whatever, when when we embrace healing in our own life, it opens the door for for mm-hmm. an environment of healing and wholeness in our in our own journey and, and in the journey of others as well. And you know, I never I'm from the South. I never ask ages and that sort of thing. We don't talk about that kind of thing on on, on the podcast. But no problem. No but problem. but you guys, I just want to say, you guys are at a stage in life where so many people are thinking about, yeah, we've worked, we've got, we've done it. We're kind of trying to slow down and, and, you know, live these easy years and that sort of thing. But I'm, I'm, I'm bringing this in now because I'm wanting to show people the work that you've done, the history that's there, the, the relationship that you've sown into God's not letting y'all just kind of sit back on your laurels. This is probably the most fruitful season of your life in many ways. So talk about what God's doing between you right now and, and the incredible things. I, I've been able to watch that in the mentoring program over the last few years and seeing you guys press into that. But what does this season look like for you guys that for many is slowing down, but for you guys is speeding up? Well, I'm, I've been saying, um, I think in December, I started saying that, you know, it's a new adventure. Like, yeah you know, get ready for the adventure or the adventure begins. So Terry went and and for Christmas, he got me a journal and on the front cover, it says, and so the adventure begins. Mm. And then I noticed that I had the journal I just finished at the end of the year on the back cover of that, like I made a handmade one and it's got tags and removable things. And I moved the tags and the little things around and just ended up that the the tag on the back of the cover says uh, oh it's an it's time to begin again or something oh, yeah wow. it's time wow. to begin again yeah <laughs> yes and then the the adventure begins and so it's like i don't know it's like we're just starting out yeah you know in some way i think that living as a follower of jesus not just a Christian, yeah, you know, yeah. there's a difference. Yeah, there's a yeah. difference. But living by the spirit, there you go. There's the fountain of youth. I love it. I love that it. That's the fountain. Like I like to watch Sid Roth. He's in his 80s. That man is so youthful. So full of energy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And just excitement for what God is doing and what's yeah. what comes next. And and okay, we got to go through hardship. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. You know, yeah. like. You know we're not alone, and yeah, just living for Christ is the best. Adventure. It's like that old old song. I've come too far to turn back now, right? It's like yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> now I know you guys are not only working with each other, you know, projects together, projects separately, but you also are involved in other communities of of Christian artists that are doing some cool things. So talk about that because I I know for all of us we realize community is a big part of thriving and everything that God's got for us, right? Yeah, yeah. So so we started um, praying into this project a few years back and uh, we bought a, a domain name and, and a website. And finally, in the last couple months with our Techie Sons help, we've been able to launch it. It's called Christian Art Creations. And basically it's a catalog of christian creatives and their works and a place where they can connect with potential clients wonderful so you know like what you're doing in the mentoring group is fantastic and you know that's why we're part of it since october 2019 (laughs) so you've taught us so much (laughs) that would be another show to say that's right (laughs) yeah yeah but um, <laughs> but Christian heart no it wasn't but <laughs> Christian art creations is is something where um, people can actually maybe have a voice yeah so our original dream was to have it be like an Etsy for Christians yeah kind of thing. but for us to be able to do a whole e e commerce thing and and we wouldn't be able to do anything else yeah you know we, everything else would have to go. You know, so maybe, you know, 
in the future when we have people we can hire we can do that yeah but as it grows it's just yeah but for now it's it's just us and uh so what people can do is is they they come on and the first month is always free uh, to subscribe and they can cancel you know at any time and so they'll they make a profile so in the profile there's a picture and we we tell them it's best to put a picture of themselves so people have someone to connect to sure and they have their contact information and a little bit about themselves then they can put in an unlimited amount of products into our catalogs the online catalogs and when people click on their a picture of the product that blows it up and then it has a little thing that says go to link and when they push the link it takes them to the artist profile love it and if they want to go from there the artist puts an etsy shop or whatever and they want yeah. to see more of their work then they connect directly with with the artist how great yeah. i love it because you're you know you're prospering you're thriving and now you're creating a platform for others to to do that as well that that need that so that's so mm -hmm. awesome guys I love it. You guys are like going and blowing, man. It's, <laughs> it's so awesome. You know, I really felt like as y'all were sharing your story, you know, during the podcast, I, I just really sense that there are maybe um, couples out there that are listening. There are maybe some guys out there that are listening, Terry, that are struggling with the same thing that you and I struggled with over the years. Uh, Teresa, maybe there are some, some wives out there um, that are, really struggling the same way you were with it, with loneliness, with, with knowing that something's going on in their marriage, but they're not quite sure what that is. Would you guys, both of you separately, just speak a word of hope to those people out there that are struggling right now that I want to pray because I believe that God's, you know, the same thing he's done in me, same thing he's done in you guys. He wants to do in others and uh, just release the same kind of freedom in them that he's done in us. So Teresa, maybe you and then Terry, just what would you say to folks maybe that are out there and struggling with those same issues today? For me, it's to find someone you can talk to. Yeah. Another strong Christian. I did that once and then I backslid and I found it again. Talk to someone you can trust can help you walk through it. I'm a mature Christian. Yeah. And then and be honest with your wife, your spouse. Yeah. Let them you're struggling yeah and try to work on it together because we found in the early part of that we were at each other like we were each other's enemies and through this process after god turned things around we realized i think it was teresa came out one night she said we're fighting the same enemy mm. so we need to cover each other's back so we have Come to stand on. back and protect ourselves yeah so this is what we started doing we started praying together as a couple i went through church and got ministry got healing that way you really have to want to do it yeah, yeah yeah i remember somebody told me one time secrecy kills honesty heals and that, that is just it's so true you know because the enemy works in secret he works in the lies and keeping things in the in the back but you bring it to the light you know and just because it's all in it always with any kind of issue it's always the fear of what is going to happen if they find out or if this happens or whatever. And it's like, if you just bring the doggone thing in the light and be like, I'm struggling with this. I need, I need help. I need somebody to walk me through this. I need healing. Um, that's where Jesus can come in and, and heal. So Teresa, what about you? What would you say just as a word of encouragement to folks? Well, initially how this healing started was he was not there at all. Yeah. And um, like he said, I had just, like, we were separated, separate rooms, uh, but he was still in the house. And that was, went on for about a month. And during that time, I went into fasting and prayer. And the very first thing I did is I presented my marriage to God. And yeah. I didn't know if it was coming back. Yeah. I just surrendered it to him. And I said, God, show me what i need to be responsible for mm -hmm. if it's two percent if it's ten yeah, percent whatever yeah. it is show me whatever it is that i'm responsible for that i need to repent of in this marriage and i just and then i went into a period of, for about a week of grieving yeah. i was grieving for my marriage but i was doing it in the spirit with god yeah it wasn't just you know oh woe it's me feeling right, sorry right, for right. myself it was like a real grieving and through that, yeah. 
I, I really believe that's where the breakthrough started. Yeah, yeah. And so I would encourage any wife who's feeling like, you know, like I, you know, God change him, God change him. Yeah. Those prayers don't work. <laughs> <laughs> you, when you come and you say, God change me. Come on. And here's my marriage. Here's yeah. my, my husband. Yeah. That's when, that's when God can really do miracles. Yeah, 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 I believe it. I believe it. Listen, if you're listening today and you're struggling on either end of that in, in a marriage or a relationship where the other, you know, there's just you're you're misfiring, as we say, you know, but you you just know there's more. I just believe that God wants to release freedom right now because God doesn't waste a story. God doesn't waste a, a testimony. And so, Father, right now we just agree together, Lord, that the freedom that you've brought, Lord, in the Arsenault's marriage and the life and the beautiful restoration, God, that you've done and in our marriage as well, Lord, and in my life, God, for a, just recovery from addiction and from performance and from fear and all that sort of thing. Father, we proclaim you as victor. We proclaim you as healer, as the one who sets the captives free. And Father, in the name of Jesus, we release freedom right now and grace to step into healing. Father, I just speak uh, to the hearts of, of men right now that may be bound in the addiction of, of pornography and all the fear that surrounds that. Father, we lose freedom over them in the name of Jesus. And God, wives that are are fearful of their losing their marriage, God, or, or not knowing what the next days will, will hold and who hold the burden for their families, God, and wondering what that's going to look like. Father, we proclaim liberty and freedom and faith envision, Lord, for all that you have for them. God, you are a God of restoration. And God, when you restore us, you do it so that we can be ambassadors of restoration. And God, we uh, God, we ask that the same restoration that you brought in our marriages, Lord, and in our relationships, God, that you would use this podcast, that you would use this interview right now, God, to, to release multiplied thousands. Shoo multiplied thousands, God, into freedom right yeah. now, that marriages would be restored, that creativity would flourish, that life, God, that life would come forth uh, as a result of the work that you're doing in people's hearts right now. Yes. Right now. We thank you for that, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Woo, come on. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Listen, if you're listening right now and you're and you're starting to, if you're crying or you're feeling something inside, listen, that's the Holy Spirit. He's, he's one, don't resist that. Don't resist that. That's the Holy Spirit moving on you right now. And whatever you got to do, if you need to just kneel down where you are or just let the tears flow or call somebody, that person that you know you need to call that, just like Terry said, you, you know, that trusted friend, somebody you need to reach out to, do it, do it, do it, do it. Because there's there's moments in the spirit when God is moving, you need to you need to move when the Holy Spirit is moving. And um, guys, I didn't know that this was gonna go this way today. Woo! <laughs> I tell you, I feel the Holy Ghost. I mean, that's <laughs> I just believe God's gonna set people free. That this is gonna be a marker moment, and the, that people all over the world are gonna be gonna be set free and start that healing journey. So. Amen. Guys, thank you for the vulnerability and uh, just the beautiful way you shared your story um, today. I know folks are going to want to connect with you further. And so where's the best place that they can connect with you and find out all the great things that, that you're doing? Well, we are on Facebook with um, TNT Art Inspirations and also Christian Art Creations. And we're on Instagram as well with both of those. So I guess that, and then my books are on Amazon. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> well, we'll put all the links in the show notes. So whether you're watching on YouTube or listening on the podcast, you can get all that. But Teresa and Terry Arsenault, thank you for being on the podcast today. Such a blessing. And I can't wait to see the fruit that comes thank from you. it.